as guardians of children or who are uh, spending time with children in some direct or indirect way, or even if it's not just about yoga per se, but even if you just want to understand different activities uh, for children, then this program is specially for all of you. You need not be uh, a certified yoga trainer as well, but it's good if you have some exposure to asanas that will really help you a lot. But still, otherwise, you will see that how profound it is to teach yoga to children. It is not just about some asanas, some funny names and folding body in different ways, but uh, so many games and activities are there. So although we call this program officially a kids yoga teacher training course, but it has a lot of components of big picture of yoga into it. So people from like broad spectrum are welcome uh, for this program, even if you think you don't have much of the yoga background. I'm sure this training is going to be helpful for all of you. Okay. So uh, since this is an introduction class today, uh, I would like to start this uh, small class with uh, what are we going to do in the program? I'm sure all of us are curious to understand how the flow is going to be and uh, what are we going to do. But before that, yes, there are some mental preparations that are really, really important. And this has helped me a lot. I have been sharing this during our kids training class that I take during YTTC also here at Govardhan Eco Village. So you all have to become childlike now. That is the biggest mental preparation. You have to drop all the reservations that how am I going to laugh without a reason or how I'm going to jump off my chair and do some activity or how am I going to be just playing with some colors and drawing something. So. Uh, you have to really become childlike and trust me, uh, in my personal experience, I still remember my day one in when I was doing my kids yoga teacher training course, which was offline. I was doing it in some ashram and uh, <laughs> I really want to share this. Uh, so many years of training with all adults and, you know, this yoga sutras and Bhagavad Gita and big, big philosophy and scriptures, they had gone so much in my head. Uh, and that it was so tough for me to open up on day one in kids yoga class when uh, my teacher was expecting all of us to jump like a froggy and I was like oh I mean nothing wrong with that I was I was not really judging them but I was so like like a serious person so called serious person and the, I know that it, that was such a false layer that I was having on me you know when I was doing my program that, oh my God, why am I not able to loosen up myself and live in the moment and smile and jump like a froggy? It was so tough. And of course, uh, first day I was like mm, hesitant and I still made it somehow, but I was getting goosebumps and I was like, and then what am I thinking and why am I thinking? I am just supposed to be like a kid. And this was my realization gradually. As the day progressed, I so much was enjoying the whole program. I opened up so much and I connected myself to my inner child. And this is what the fantastic journey was for me. And I'm hoping and praying that if you do this mental preparation of letting yourself lose and be a kid again, you're all are going to connect to your inner child, which is so, so important for us as in so-called in the role of adult right now with so many responsibilities. So one of the biggest takeaway, even if you don't teach children, even if you don't have opportunity where you're teaching the big batch of children, even just take this course as a wonderful preparation to open up your inner self. And that's what I really, really enjoyed during my program. Okay, So that is a number one mental preparation that we all need when we start embark ourselves on this journey. And let me just quickly explain you the flow of our program. Since this is online program, uh, I'm, I will be missing out on a lot of fun that we might have had when we are together and doing some activities, but still we are going to try and do it, you know, online where I will encourage you to prepare yourself with some props and still do it like this online on Zoom. So we have division in every class from next week onwards, where we have half portion as theory. In theory, we understand different age groups of children. And uh, what are the social and other psychological developments that they're going through at certain age? And based on that, what kind of yoga is appropriate for them? So that will be one aspect we will be discussing every week. Uh, so we'll be putting age group like birth to two years, then three to five, five to seven, 
onwards like that. Of course, you'll have notes of all of these things. So don't worry uh, if you are missing out on a few things that I'm talking right now. So age-wise yoga, appropriate development and their favorite practices that they like to do. Uh, you know, at each age group, they will have some practices that they connect to the most. So we'll be discussing all of those activities. So half part will be theory and half part will be discussing some practices. Some practices are to be done in the group. So we won't be able to do it, but I will be discussing it then with you that this is how you can take it. And some we will actually do it, including today. We have some activity planned today as well. So we will be doing that. So this is how the program is going to flow every week. And of course, um, whoever has done my previous teacher training program, small or big, you know that I never leave you alone without any assignments. <laughs> Ramji is smiling here. So <laughs> yes, every week you will have some homework to show, do and show up on the group. So whatever you are going through, whatever learnings you will be getting every week based on that, you have to actually start your teaching journey now. And you're going to make small videos on that and share with us. And that will be your homework. Uh, the details of homework and assignment, I leave it on the group. Whoever signs up, post this program. More details, I'll send it. But this is how go going to be the program flow. Okay. Uh, and then the next, uh, let's see more about the overview. Uh, the goal of this entire program is to make yoga as something very joyful and fun for kids. Before doing my teacher training program, kids teacher training program, I had this assumption that, of course, I know so many asanas, I know so many pranayam, I know some meditation here and there. All I have to do to teach children is just change my voice, change my pitch, sound a little more bubbly. That's it. And I was so wrong. <laughs> it's not just about that. <laughs> There are so many details and so many games and activities that you can actually put in the classroom apart from some asanas and how you can rename some asanas, how you can invent stories. So there's so much to everything. And that's what we are going to learn here. So our goal is not to make them super yoga conscious and fit and physically you know, active. That's there. That, these are all positive bonus that they're going to get in the guise, in, in the nice uh, you know, guise of, being joyful and fun, uh, loving class. So they need to like the class first. They need to enjoy the class. They need to love the concept of yoga to actually learn more about it. Because honestly speaking, if you ask me, especially children, eight plus, nine plus, they have this assumption that, ah, oh, yoga is for women, for girls. Yoga is so boring. I don't like yoga. So these are some assumptions that you will see how we can prove uh, it's very interesting for them. So this is what we are going to learn through every module that how are we going to innovate all the yogic concepts that we might be knowing, including some uh, philosophy of yoga, how we can impart it to children from childhood. So all these things we are going to see in the course. Okay. Uh, so what are we technically going to focus on when it comes to theory part and practice part? We are going to see importance of yoga for children. This little bit we are going to covering up today itself, some benefits. We are going to focus a lot on every class on teaching tips that some hints and clues and managing the chaos with children. So we're going to give some teaching tips and uh, contraindications that you all should be mindful about uh, of age wise do's and don'ts of some practices that you should not be taking. So all this we will be focusing on. Uh, as I mentioned previous slide that we will be focusing on uh, understanding different age groups and its related practices so that we don't mix up the concept that, okay, teaching kids is one thing uh, and we overall, we will be getting an idea of games and activities to take for them, yogic games. But if I take certain game for 10 plus, they will not like it. So we need to understand some age appropriate games and challenges as well that they would like. Whatever I'm going to take for a kid of five or six years of age, trust me, after eight, when the logical side starts to develop, they're not going to fall for your magic and creativity and colors. They might need more action and challenge in the class. So this is what exactly we're going to see uh, on different practices and how to shift the mood and the lesson planning as you deal with different age groups. Okay? Definitely, this is my favorite part. We are going to cover a lot and discuss about innovative ways of teaching yoga through stories, games, activities, coloring, 
magic, challenges. So all these things we are going to see. Uh, well, you are going to start shopping soon or collecting something from your house around and start getting creative because we need a lot of props when it comes to teaching children yoga. And trust me, there are so many props around you, but just we don't know how to use them. So we're going to see how to use different props, uh, how to create yoga story, how to recite yoga story. And this is also part of your assignment where once you learn this art, you're also going to be designing a yoga story and sharing it with us. So this is also very important aspect of our class. Some of the props we are going to also see in today's class at the end of this program. Uh, we are technically going to see the teaching methodology. What is the lesson planning? How to sequence kids yoga class? And of course, when I say this, how to sequence the class, how to plan a class. One thing we are going to also see is how to throw the lesson planning out of the class. <laughs> we have to be very mentally flexible with children, but uh, always have lesson plan A, lesson plan B ready so that you are ready as a teacher with some props, with some ideas, if one thing did not work in your class. So we are going to see how much discipline and how much flexibility, this wonderful balance we are going to have uh, through this teaching methodology concept, Kids Yoga. Oh, well, uh, at the end of the program, when you are thorough with all the age groups and when you have a lot of experience doing your assignments, you could be also throwing some basic light. Again, I'm saying this is not going to be covered in great detail. Uh, it's very nice if you have experts and special trainers for this, but definitely uh, we will be putting some light on yoga for kids with special conditions, uh, for special children, autism, ADHD, some impairments that they might have, hearing impairment or uh, speech therapy. So what exact practices help in whatever therapies that they're going professionally? So how yoga can be also part of their life, you know, with whatever uh, parents are doing for them or they have special therapists. So how yoga can play a role also and how you can contribute in their lives, like, you know, with autism, ADHD, and other uh, disorders or conditions. So we are going to focus on that as well. And uh, of course, we'll be giving you a lot of resources at the end of the program. Why at the end? I'm, I get this question very frequently because if I give all the resources now, your mind is going to shut down. <laughs> ah, you'll be like, ah, ha, ha, whatever she's talking, so we have it in the notes, so forget it. <laughs> I Let me not attend the class. I'll hear the recording later. So I have, have this experience. I would personally, if, get more relaxed when I'll have the resource first because I know I can just scroll through the books and design something. I want you all to be very creative when it comes to, you know, doing your homework. So uh, this one thing I'm going to do is, you know, be a little unfair with all of you is give you all the resources at the end and not in the beginning. This is for your good, trust me. And what the resources are going to have. It will have your asana guides and how we have renamed different asanas to make it very interesting for kids. Shall I give you one example? Uh, anybody from yogic background, if you know the asana, forward bend or uh, paschimottanasan, full forward bend. Okay? Uh, I'm sure those who have some yoga background will, this is a popular asana. And of course, I don't tell children that children, kids, we are going to now do forward bend or paschimottanasan. They're not excited. So what I will call it? I'll call it as a sandwich pose. Okay. Yes, and I'm sure you can visualize the forward bend now and how our legs are one part of the bread. My upper body is another part of the bread. And I'm going to fill up my sandwich with different things by moving, putting some cheese or vegetables. And yogis love eating vegetables. So let's put some more veggies into it and then slowly close the sandwich. And then they might not even know that they're doing Paschimottanasan. But they are so happy. They are doing sandwich pose. So all the asanas we have renamed in our asana book. Uh, and this is how it is going to be very interesting for them. Okay. Uh, so this is what you're going to get in the asana guide. You're going to get around 20 breathing practices, pranayam, and special ways on how to teach them those. You're going to get a lesson planning sheet on how to plan a lesson. You're going to get around 50 games innovative games, which has uh, yoga incorporated in it. Uh, yoga, or let's say some physical movements, warm-ups. So all of this is part of your uh, resources. 
and also some other resources that I have taken from other schools as it is, I have purchased those books from them. So I would be happy to give them you know, to you at free of cost, of course, because it's part of your program. And they have some amazing recipes for children, uh, sugar-free and which are more healthy uh, in, in nature. So those recipes are there. There's one book which uh, has a wonderful asana stories and guide. So I had purchased it from one of the teachers. So I'm happy to share it with you at the end of the course, all of these things. So that's going to be an official manual, plus some resources and additional books is what you're going to get at the end of the program. On a regular basis, whatever I'm sharing with you right now, this all of this PPTs and everything will be posted on a weekly basis so that you can revisit them, study them and prepare your homework on that. So this is going to be uh, an overview of the course. At the end, uh, at the end of the program, I will be giving you a month's time to prepare for your final kind of class examination, where you're going to take, based on whatever lesson planning tech, uh, methodology that you have learned through this program, you're going to apply it in your entire class and mock teach. If you have children around you, I'm very happy you can do that as a class and video record it, or you can just mock it. You can put camera on your own self and mock teaching children. Uh, for the entire sequence that I will be discussing on lesson planning. So this is going to be, you know, a two way thing. I'll be doing my job, of course, by sharing all the knowledge, but every week you have to be attentive and you have to also regularly do your homework. And at the end, you have to design and prepare the entire class for children. And a couple of more assignments, small, big are there, which I'll be keeping you updated as we progress in the program. Okay. Um, Okay, let's do one nice centering activity. Okay, so centering activity, this is for kids and adults too. Okay, and why centering activity? Sometimes children, right? And even adults, why just to blame children? We can just lose the track of whatever is happening around and we will just, again, we will flow with our own monkey mind here and there. So this is, you know, a great idea to bring ourselves in the present moment. So one of the centering activity is where you can just stand omkar for children or just breathe. And how do you do that in a different way with children? So if I just chant om, it can be sometimes tough to focus children. So using some movement with chant is very helpful when it comes to teaching children. Uh, so what I like to do sometimes in uh, kids yoga class is also raising your arms up from the sides. When you chant Om, and when you start chanting Makara, the last part of Omkar, you bring your palms together up and then bring them down at your heart center. So I'm going to show it to you again. Om. Okay. And of course, this helps them to breathe better because of the chest opening, you know, arms to the side. So this is also helpful. Uh, for breathing nicely, deeply, and centering them at, in the present moment. You can do this in the beginning of the class, in the middle of the class. So like that, chanting Om you know, is fantastic. So before we go for one activity that I want to take today, it's a grounding activity and centering activity. Let's chant three Omkar this way, like raising the arms up from the sides. Okay, so let's chant Om. Again. Um, a strong. Um, fantastic. So you see what happened actually? Sometimes while chanting Om, because just the sound that I'm making, I might not be even present with it if I'm just chanting it sometimes, especially with children, they're looking here and there. So when you combine the physical movements with this mantra, it can have more benefit on children in the beginning. And then gradually as they learn the art of focusing and you take some pranayama practices with them, they will learn to chant Om without any movement. This is a beautiful activity. and. Uh, 
one more uh, you know activity which is going to ground us in the present moment and we are going to work do a nice small workout with our five senses is i'm going to quickly share i hope all of you are in the home somewhere or traveling i mean i think it's still possible if you're traveling i i feel so it's okay no matter where you are it is going to help you okay so here what i want to share with you okay so now you have to acknowledge five things you see around you okay it's pretty fast right you saw five things around you can be chair computer in front of you tree anything around you right just acknowledging them no problem we're just bringing you in the present moment <laughs> Okay, now you have to acknowledge four things that you can feel or touch. Maybe it's your chair, hair, <laughs> keyboard, whatever. Done? Good. Okay, three. Acknowledge three things that you can hear. I can hear clock ticking in my room. I can hear vehicles because I the place I am in here right now, it's a lot of traffic. So I can hear honking and I'm looking for third sound. Oh, that's, that's my dog barking. I have three sounds. So could you hear three sounds around you? Okay, two, acknowledge two things that you can smell. I can smell my own lip balm. <laughs> and I can now smell some dupe uh, incense stick being put outside of my I, I was just more mind. I never knew this, but just because I'm doing this activity with all of you, I'm also being mindful of this. Ah, interesting. Now let's see if you are able to do this. Acknowledge one thing that you can taste. So go and grab something. No problem. <laughs> Anything around. Oh, water. Linda, that's smart. You don't have to waste time getting up, tasting the water. Perfect. <laughs> Let me do that as well. <laughs> Very nice. So now, since you have activated all your five senses quickly in a short span of time, that's a good job. And now uh, let this experience just sink into yourself. Just feel grounded by taking a conscious note of this experience. Just you can close your eyes for a few seconds. Fantastic. And now let's come back to whatever we are doing with more awareness, more grounded, more calm, more conscious. So this activity you can do with children as well. Okay. Now, uh, and this is what our course is going to be all about. Every time in theory, in between, I'm going to poke some activities for you. And this is exactly what you need to be also doing for children at the beginning of the class. Whenever you see that the class is not going that great, they are too chaotic, they are too much here and there. And then, okay, let's do this centering activity. So that really is helpful. Okay. okay. Having said that, let's officially discuss. We all know actually that it's nice, you know, to teach uh, yoga to children. So what are some of the benefits? There are a lot of benefits actually. And I have jotted down some of them. Uh, I'm sure all of you will agree to this that we are responsible for our future generation, for their good training, upbringing, and yoga plays a very, very big role in that. So these are some of the benefits that will help you to convince different schools or uh, places where children, you will find more children and you want to start sharing yoga with them. So if you have this list of benefits ready with you, I'm sure you'll have more confidence in convincing whoever uh, would like to start such activity. 
And in fact, even when you start your yoga classes, if, if you are keen on, you know, training uh, children, if you're already a, a, a yoga teacher and you want to start this area now, kids yoga. So knowing the benefits and sharing also with parents are, is going to help you to start your journey somewhere. When they hear benefits, they're going to be more convinced that, yes, uh, let me enroll my kid for this class. So it's very important that technically also you have this list with you so that you can uh, keep sharing with others and also for our own understanding that what are we standing for? What, why, are, why am I learning this kids yoga? Because it, it's going to offer a lot of benefits to them. Okay. So various yogic practices, asanas and activities and games that we take. So all the activities and games that we take are actually yogaized. You understand yogaized? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like wrapped in such a way it looks like a game or ordinary activity where kids are having fun, but every activity and game is going to have some hidden principle from yogic books <laughs> or some asana that they are learning or some yamas and niyamas, that is some do's and don'ts for those who don't know. So something that they are learning from that whole concept. So, you know, this all thing is going to help them improve their focus, concentration and overall progress their learning experience. Okay? And obviously no brainer when they are physically active, they're also going to get some mental health benefits too. So there are a lot of group activities, team games, team building exercises that we have in yoga, which is going to help them win mentally. So uh, Ramsey, can I take the questions in the end, if it's okay? Yeah, for all of us, we'll take questions at the end so that we have an un uninterrupted class now. For those who will be hearing the recording, that's always a good experience. So uh, at the end, we will take up the questions, okay? So physical and mental health. Mental health, especially, you will see that how different activities and uh, team building exercises that we do in yoga class for children helps them with their mental health as well. So very, very important. And especially, you're going to learn this beautiful relaxation techniques, mindfulness ideas on how to take, you know, with children. So this is very good for their mental health. Okay. And we really want them to be physically active now. Of course, we all know the reason. Stuck with the gadgets, right? <laughs> even us and even children now. I was still at, uh, I am at the age where I still feel that I had a childhood gadget free. <laughs> but now, no more. After my generation, I think, no, everybody had mobiles pretty early on. So we have played with, you know, and um, we had some connection with Mother Earth every day for our, during our playtime. But now it's getting very lesser and lesser and people are more active on the screen. So many people end up telling me that I'm an adult now. I'm an old person. My flexibility is not so good. You know, I said, no, your flexibility is sometimes much better than a kid's flexibility nowadays. <laughs> They're really not moving much. So we have to make them, you know, physically active. And that is one of the benefits we are giving them through yoga practices. Okay? Uh, various breathing practices and other yogi asana practices is going to strengthen their nervous system. And of course, all, all the functions in the body are going to go better with that. Okay? And then, of course, the next point is so important for me personally. Uh, you, you might not connect directly that how some asanas or how some pranayama are going to improve self-esteem. But as I said, we're going to you know wrap everything up into wonderful games and activities where children get to become leaders in the class. They become small yoga gurus. I call them, now you're a yoga guru in the class and you're going to do this and that. You will get to know as we, you know, see more activities. So in that guise of, you know, yoga guru, they are coming forward. They're sharing a little bit about, they know about that asana. They're showing it to others. And this is going to actually improve on their self-esteem and uh, improvise on their confidence level as well. Okay. And we chant some loud affirmations in some of the asanas. For example, when we do warrior pose, we uh, uh, especially when children are going through the examination stress, I like to take this. They are doing a warrior pose and we say, I am strong, I am brave, I'm confident. And there's a group of children and they chant it loudly and the surcharge, you know, the energy, the strength, it's like so contagious that they feel strong. And that's how, you know, we can enhance confidence through different ways in yoga class. Okay? And the next point is very important again. Um, we are helping children to uh, develop the muscles of, of course, there are no 
muscles, but I'm, I'm talking about the subtle muscles that we need to exercise even in children is of awareness muscles. <laughs> yeah? Awareness and understanding of the body. That, okay, I feel this here. The, this is sensation is arising when I practice some breathing or when I do this particular asana, ah, I am feeling something on my back. Oh, when I do this asana, I'm feeling something on my throat region. I feel something on my shoulder. So when we are actually making them more mindful in the class, we are making an effort here. Of course, it will take time for kids to really become aware of everything happening. But that's so important if they develop this awareness and understanding from the childhood. Trust me, and when they grow up, they'll be very mindful person. Most of them, whoever is practicing this in the class, they will have a wonderful life ahead because they'll be more conscious and aware beings uh, if they are practicing yoga from the childhood. This next point, when it comes to preventing stress and anxiety, some people have shock on their face when I take live classes on this subject. They're like, the children, we thought that we should be like children, you know, no stress, no anxiety. But mind you guys, I'm sure many of you will agree with me, children do have stress and anxiety. It can be due to the uh, home atmosphere, uh, disturbance in, you know, uh, in the families or uh, uh, disturbance at the school level. Maybe they, you know, parents are expecting something that need to be, you know, scoring some marks or they have some pressure from friends, teasing. You don't know what's happening. You know, academic stress can be there, peer pressure from parents, from surrounding. So children are also carrying a lot of baggage sometimes. See, for us, at least, I'm not saying it's easy for anyone to live with stress and anxiety, but at least for us, we know, or at least we can share, or we are aware sometimes that, oh, I'm just feeling so stressful today, or I'm anxious. And suddenly we start doing something about it. Maybe wrong or right, I don't know, but we start doing something about it. But children, they... First problem is they sometimes don't even identify the emotions. What are they going through? So that's also a problem sometimes. They can't even identify that what's wrong actually at the first place. But something is going wrong and there is an imbalance of energies here. So definitely there are ways uh, in yoga class, um, asanas and relaxation techniques, which helps them to remove any hidden suppressed emotion, fear, and there are some activities we take in the class which also helps them to identify uh, their uh, emotions, how to identify emotions. That is also one activity that we take in kids yoga class. Okay? So this is one thing that is a great benefit to children. And then, of course, what we encourage, this does not happen sometimes everywhere, but what we encourage is that yoga should be a wonderful non-competitive physical activity. Every time when they are put into some sport, they have to come first or they have to perform, they have to score. So yoga is not about that. Even when we take some yoga games where everybody's performing and you know, uh, something like that, they always tell me, what will I get if I come first? What? I said, no, nobody, no, we are not even considering who comes first, who comes last. What are we doing is learning how our bodies can move in different shapes you know how we can move in different ways how we can breathe how we feel things so this is what you know i encourage that this is something different than typical educational setup where everything is competitive they have to perform they have to come first then they have to score good nothing like that we have to give them freedom here where they relax and just learn and see how can how the body moves in different ways and enjoy that so that is one more benefit. It's a non-competitive. They don't have pressure of it that I have to do this asana and come first. So nothing like that. Okay? Uh, definitely, it can help to improve behavior pattern. And uh, very important is it helps to, you know, uh, to keep them relaxed, especially after exams, a lot of studies. And children actually complain. Whenever, whenever I was taking online classes, I remember children were telling me, my fingers are paining. I'm writing a lot. I have a lot of homework. My shoulders are paining. So see, children are aware sometimes and they know they have this stress and pain and aches. So definitely uh, yoga can be a relaxation tool for them. So these are some of the benefits. Plus, of course, there are a lot. We'll quickly run through them as well. We take some creative activities. Uh, and it can help them to open up their channels of creativity, you know, 
uh, we take some art and craft and origami mandala decoration designing coloring so all these activities in the class is going to help them to increase their creativity and very very important that many parents they come up with this you know and yoga is one of the solution for it is they end up feeling that sometimes that my kid is hyperactive or not so active so the problem is not the kid is hyperactive maybe they and sometimes if there is not a disorder sometimes it's not just hyperactive kid but it's parents inability to actually keep that kid engaged and uh, utilize and channelize the kids energy in the right directions and when they find it they say now my child is fine so it's not about you know just not uh, being hyperactive or tagging someone as you know hyperactive which is our inability to keep them engaged this is what you know i read in one of the uh, ancient books of bihar school of yoga and so here i i will share this in some class i think i have a quote from that uh, thing on hyperactivity does that really exist you know adhd or hyperactive it's it's more of the ability where we expect kids to be adult <laughs> and uh, because we are not able to cope up we think that no 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 my kid is hyperactive so questioning that itself whether anything like this exists or not but any which ways if we really think what yoga can help is channelize the energy you know making them physically active it helps a lot balancing the energy uh we can teach children how to deal with the stresses of life and i remember this whenever i share in online classes sometimes when they are stressful about exams or any assignments they have to do and uh, even even as young as you know 6 7 years when i tell them if you are tired what do you do then when i take the exam at the end they have this loving you know cute answers at the end so whenever i feel tired and stressed i should be doing ramri deep breathing and shavasana so they really learn this they really answer this and they apply it as much as possible with the encouragement of the parents and teachers of course they are definitely learning that when i'm a, whenever i'm tired stressed and clouded i can breathe i can do shavasana i can do ramri and they really know it through the classes so they learn that too overall it improves physical flexibility in children and i have seen that for those children who are good at some competitive sports in the school they are participating in different sports or passionate about different sports in the school whether they are outdoor games or indoor games i have seen that various coaches and sports teachers they also recommend that uh, let this kid also do yoga along with whatever it is whether the kid is athlete or whether it's chess or some board game that they're good at so since yoga is balancing you know is a is an art, uh, yoga is a science which is bringing balance in the personality or increasing that awareness dexterity you know agility so all the uh, children who are also into some profession sports the yoga is also a very helpful activity for them and all the coaches have been recommending for children adults same okay and very important uh, you can uh, it helps in balancing the hormones this is very important subject which we are going to discuss a little more in depth in our upcoming classes just to give an idea we know that the onset of puberty uh, is pretty early nowadays with uh, children and this is a this is kind of an emotional and mental havoc for children <laughs> trust me when the body is not ready at the age of 8 9 and 10 and the puberty strikes so imagine the physical body is not ready or something happened to the physical body and emotional and mental health it's all going to have lot of chaos inside the system and for a kid it is very difficult to comprehend the whole experience and it's lot of disturbing thing inside so uh, well honestly as per some scriptures there are few specific practices that can really help in delaying the uh, you know the onset of puberty in children we can at least try i mean you know there are some statistics there are some data definitely but we can at least put that effort and there there is a particular number of age they have mentioned that at at least from the age of 8 we have to do this this practices with children and this can really help them to delay the onset of puberty which will strike then on the right time when they are physically emotionally mentally more matured so that is one thing that yoga has a great benefit in that area and uh, one more benefit it is mentioned here that 
we can have a wonderful you know uh, discipline in the class as well at the same time little independence freedom so we are striking this amazing balance in the class and you will see that our class will be fun at the same time it will be chaotic with some games at the same time our classes will have something which calms them down they are in silence they are in discipline so this is a wonderful balance you know that they get that okay this is my time to play run around but now is a time i have to meditate so this wonderful balance is uh, being you know strike uh, through various yoga practices so these are some of the benefits the list will go on and on but we will stop here of course okay uh, as aspiring teachers and caregivers you know uh, to children let us discuss on now some of the important points to remember when you are going to share yoga uh, with children i'm assuming that all of you maybe a parent or aspiring teacher or a care uh, you know a taker of children you know you want to include yoga in their part so these are some of the points you need to know let the asana be about experiencing the ways body can move and enjoy getting the postures corrected i know for adults class it's such a big thing you know alignment corrections precisions and uh, modifications and teachers will come and will correct you and give you the right alignment blah 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 not for kids yoga at least a certain age this details on corrections we will discuss when we are discussing every age group but general principle we are definitely not going to correct children let the triangle pose for every kid look innovative and different in the class that's okay we have to accept that and enjoy that okay and it does it does happen you have to of course portray it you have to show it but you don't have to really over correct a kid uh, as far as you don't see that they are making a mistake which is going to be injurious to their body or they're going to fall down or something as far as that is not there you don't have to look for a perfect triangle or any perfect asana like that okay so no corrections are needed in the kids yoga class breathing should be through the nose rather than mouth this is especially applying to regular general practice uh, that we are discussing of course there are some practices where we breathe out through the mouth we enjoy that too so that is a different part but overall when they are doing some asanas encourage you know breathing through the nose rather than mouth uh we must include relaxation in the class because sometimes we are scared as teachers you know that children don't like to lie down they will not appreciate it uh, you know they can't they don't need relaxation maybe they have lot of energy we don't have to assume this actually they do need uh, they need to learn the art of relaxation and there's a way actually there is an even innovative ways on how we are going to encourage them to lie down for some time trust me this works i have tried it and it has worked uh, fantastically and i'm going to share these techniques with you they love relaxation if you just know how to make them you know uh, relax that energy so it's important they need relaxation ideally the next point ideally it is uh, it is nice if you can divide classes by age groups usually this is a problem <laughs> sometimes you have siblings joining together and uh, sometimes you have a huge group this even i go through this sometimes we have a big group you know in govardhan eco village like 50 60 children 100 children and they all are mixed age group it's a challenge you you can sail through it no problem but if you are really specializing it if you are going to teach in some school setup you are going to do it in your studio see if it's possible for you to divide classes by age groups and what age groups we are going to cover it up from next week onwards but on a general principle it's nice if together then it's also fine sometimes because the children are really learning from the elder children a lot and the same age group is also good for their social development each has its benefit but as a teacher personally uh, some activities some games some stories may not connect to elder children which might connect to younger child so this is a difference you might want to respect okay um generally speaking especially as a parent or a teacher of a small group it's good if you can follow the minds and interest of the children and not make it again just like a typical school educational setup in school in typical education setup children are made to sit and whatever teacher is giving they just have to take it let children co-create the class this is what i always do in you know the classes 
let them co-create discuss have sharing circles in the beginning or at the end of the class let them co-create the class keep your lesson plans flexible in such a way that whatever children want to do there has to be a nice balance of what you are planning to systematically give them every class and whatever even they want so it has to be a wonderful balance of both okay uh, of course keep it dynamic and fun uh, you can put some more extra asanas or activities and always be more you know creative with when it comes to children uh, when i say dynamic and fun my another aspect also which is not on the screen but when it comes to dynamic and fun let let there be some hours you know or some minutes in the class which are silence and mindful so it has to be a wonderful balance okay as i said in the next line lesson needs a balance as well as spontaneity that's very important <laughs> if you stick to your lesson plan you will you will be disappointed and be stuck at some point oh my god i don't know what to do now children are not enjoying this activity and this has happened to me as well how much hard work i had put in planning props and uh, uh inventing and reinventing and reading some blogs of yoga teachers and reading some children book and then finding this activity and i'm so excited it's me who is excited okay by the way i'm so excited children are going to love this i'm already you know in my own ego that oh they are going to love my game you know and then, <laughs> children are super honest <laughs> they can tell you on their face you know on your face <laughs> boring game mati ji that's what people have so i know some children telling me on my face it's very boring game and i'm like oh my god i've been preparing for it so much so children they are teaching you so much you know you have to keep our lesson plan and ego both aside <laughs> and then you know have some spontaneous plans ready in the head kids love challenge but in yoga make it personal challenge personal goal or self improvement so that they don't take challenge as to compete with each other but compete with the with the self so let it be more you know uh, that conscious class because everything otherwise in the school setup typical educational setup is all about uh, competing with each other who's scoring first who's scoring less so we don't want that give them some challenging activities but let it be more personal in nature and for improving the self and not over someone in the class okay and and that this is what you're going to learn if you are thinking how do i really do that in a practical way i know these principles are very nice and you're noting it down but there might be a question in your head right now that how do i actually do that you know challenging at the same time non competitive we are going to see that over the period of time through all the activities and this is my personal favorite the last point uh, sometimes due to various time constraints or lack of place or proper facilities or awareness sometimes it's not possible to have a formal class <laughs> okay so 5 to 6 we are going to have kids yoga no that's not happening all the time every time i'm spending my time somewhere i'm walking across and i'm spending some time in the temple or walking around i see community or small group of children playing with each other and just go and teach some little breathing exercise to them like a game of course they i i will share this practice as we go through the program further so there is one practice we always do it they don't even know that it's like you know of course now they know it's a breathing practice but they enjoy it because all together sitting using our fingers and doing some breathing and they're like oh wow we are coming together and playing but they are doing some nice breathing activity and pranaya and that's it that's what i do with them for 5 minutes so it it doesn't mean that your class has to be always formal in terms of kids yoga or i have to formally announce of course that will be part of our structure when we learn but informally also you can teach so many yogic principles and uh, spiritual principles for that matter you can teach them about rules and regulations do's and don'ts samas and niyamas so it did not be a formal class all the time okay uh, very important some of the contraindications uh, we are going to have contraindication for every age group precisely when we discuss our uh, upcoming uh, weeks but for now some of the contraindications uh, if you are aware of uh, some of the yogic practices then you might connect it with little faster for those who don't know we will spend more time in our upcoming classes to understand the practices so no bandhas bandhas are the locks uh, that we do in pranayam practices if you don't know then it's okay good for you we, we don't do any way with children uh, but for those who know 
then we are not doing any locks and breath retention kumbhaks kumbhak means breath retention and bandhas means locks so no bandhas and no kumbhaks till 12 years and up we can do it i would rather say it's safe to do it post 16 only so post 13 15 okay okay but i would say 16 post 16 they are ready for teacher training program also which is usually for adults in the everywhere like you know they themselves can enroll but before that we don't do because uh, there are a couple of reasons behind it their lungs are still developing uh, and we don't want them to uh, really over strain sometimes the awareness is not that developed yet whether they can really differentiate that am i suffocating myself or am i really overdoing it that discrimination is not there yet or might not be there with all the children some might have some might not have so we cannot you know uh, really uh, take a risk here so no we should not be doing it and then second point is no holding of asanas for longer time so anywhere between let's say if the age group is 6 years 7 years then anywhere between fifth uh, so uh, children for under 6 i would say 15 second little bit here and there is okay so under 15 second of holding time is fine and children under 12 6 to 12 age group anywhere again between 15 to 30 seconds ratio is fine again this another same physiological reason is there that uh, the bone development is still in progress the process of ossification as we call you know fusing of bones and making it more stronger if we hold particular asana for a very long time there might be chance that the bone can take that permanent shape so we don't want to overdo it or hold it for longer time and anyways this is not a problem children anyways don't hold it for longer time <laughs> they are constantly want to move from one thing to another so anyways it's not a challenge for you to you know have them hold not hold they will anyways release it in fact you have to inspire them to at least hold for 10 seconds or 15 seconds and we will see how to do that uh, that is also there don't make it like a punishment uh i know some <laughs> we all have this habit i don't not we all i will not generalize it here but many of us might be saying that okay if you don't do this then you have to do this asana you know which you don't like or you know something like that so making it less a punishment uh, uh that you have to do this breathing practice you have to do this asana uh, you know it's tough so if you don't do this then you have to do this so no let them enjoy it because that will create that negative impression that ah if when i don't listen or then i have to do this asana which means yoga is bad it's not good it's a punishment okay uh practice of inversions you need to be little careful with this inversions are i'm talking about the actual inversions there there are some partial inversions too that's fine like downward dog and all that's fine but uh, actual inversions are uh, shirshas headstand shoulder stand then inversion uh, inverted pose which is like similar to uh, sarvangasana the shoulder stand so we don't have to force children into this because every kid has its different uh, you know sense of balance which is developing with age and uh, motor skill development of coordinating uh, you know the movement muscles with the balance it's too much for a kid sometimes so we have to be little careful with inversions 8 plus 9 plus usually it's not a problem but younger than that we have to be little mindful be around with them okay okay um and this principles we are going to discuss for individual age groups too some contraindications are important we'll go into little detail of it in every week class okay now some diseases if they have headaches and fever they are really putting low energy that day they are requesting that they are not feeling nice it's okay don't force them into some practice um it's okay if they just want to do some activity that they like which is not very strenuous physically it's like sitting coloring something designing or something they can do that you can have a small corner in the class always for children you know who want to do something different and not participate in your asana practice that day um some children might come with some chronic conditions like asthma juvenile diabetes so it's good if you as a you know because since all of us are not doctors here maybe some of you are i don't know so since we are yoga teachers and we are not doctors it's good if they can you know discuss this with parents doctors 
and then get a form signed up you know which you know that if there is if there are certain contraindications then you are safely you know sharing that so it's important to take some history of a kid if any okay okay i want to share some uh, last week of course then i'm opening up this session for some questions i want to just show you some yoga props so that from today onwards you can start uh, mm, you can start sharing this uh not sharing sorry you can start collecting this uh somewhere in the house or from outside so i'm going to share one page right now uh, i'm going to share another page just give me a moment i'm going to discuss some of the props okay so there are some feathers these are very helpful for some breathing practices and asana teaching the concept of breathing so feathers you can have some fresh flowers available all the time that's okay you don't need all of it now but gradually now let your eyes start collecting it somewhere around you know whenever you are popping out of the house and if you happen to see a shop where you find some feathers so grab them now <laughs> gradually start shopping for some uh props if you have it around somewhere doing nothing now it's time to keep one you know collect some basket or a bag and uh collect them so i'm sure you know pom pom balls that uh you get in the market you will get all of this in some particular craft shop uh in children shop mostly or somewhere you know you, you have this drawing art and craft shops you will get that around you if not then online of course it's also available ice cream sticks some soft ball this is for uh, different activities that you can also take teaching some new asanas playing some games uh and now this is this is not a hoberman spear actually that i have shown in the picture it's an indian version of hoberman spear ball <laughs> a cheap hoberman spear ball it's like you know you the, uh, i'm i don't know how many of you really know hoberman spear ball it really goes big right and uh, i was trying to find it in india but i did not find it online it was very expensive and then i happened to walk into some nice uh, kind of a thrift market in mumbai i can say <laughs> and then i found this ball very cheap this is small it doesn't go very big so it is a small ball uh, which when you pull it out it becomes a little bigger so google today if you don't know what is this ball hoberman spear just google how it operates so you have some idea and this is very nice to teach breathing concept to children and encourage them to do it along with you so when i use this ball it's more easier for children to follow me along for expansion of the chest then close the ball this is very small so i can buy more and individual but hope you know on spear ball you can just buy one or two depending on you know whom you want to teach whether it's personal use or for a teaching purpose so depending on investments you want to make i have a homely alternative for hoberman spear also so you don't have to hurry up in spending money a lot as we go on progressing more in the program i'll teach you that if you don't have any of this ball like this expandable ball you can also do it with fingers so we will do that okay you need to learn some origami now or have your children do it i am not great at it so what i do is smartly i just keep some papers and i tell children to make the boards and everything <laughs> and they are very good at it and then i pick up one yoga leader that day who is really fast and quick at it and i ask him to show him or her to show everyone in the class so including some craft and there's a reason behind it it's not just about craft again we are going to teach some breathing practice through this paper board so everything you know like you can keep some origami stuff ready some papers colorful papers like that ready okay some sticks this is very good for helping children to hold the asana stable find some balance focus and concentration and of course uh, how to use them is something we are going to discuss every class when we discuss activity part so some sticks now these are these are actually uh, i got these sticks from uh, you use this for cooking on baking what do you call them sorry i forgot the name um uh, toothpick 
yeah something similar to toothpick but thicker version of it uh or or you know wheat we have the spoons also right chinese wheat this spoon so even that is also fine any kind of you know thin which are non like you know non like not very picky those sticks are fine straw hula hoop rings so whatever is around little bit you don't have to have all of this whatever little bit you see that you have it around try to grab it and store in some in some place okay so hula hoop ring is also a nice uh, so of course here you're not going to teach them hula hoop but there are some ways of how you are putting it into the yoga games all this activities okay and then i have some of the stones uh it, in the picture if you see it's a nice pouch that i have and some stones are coming out of it just in case if you are not able to see it clearly and i call them as you know magic stones stones that take away your worry <laughs> and these are really helpful in shavasana so having some nice crystals or small stones like this of course i mean these are artificial stones you get easily in some uh, craft store or market or somewhere especially i know in some pottery you know uh, in the pots in the glass we put this uh, uh, stones decorative colorful stones so same stones you can use also but be mindful with the age group when you are using stones don't use them with a uh, very young children uh there is a risk where if we don't monitor they might you know end up eating it so be mindful with the age group here yeah? uh you can make your own emotions card or you can get it online also it's easily available both ways so emotions card is where you will see a kid uh, smiling laughing angry embarrassed shocked surprised scared hungry sleepy everything whatever you are facing right now maybe all of you <laughs> all of your emotions uh, so all of that can be there and we can play at least around 5 to 6 games yoga games when it comes to you know using this emotion cards especially with small group big group as a family so mind you that i'm going to also share every time not just about the classroom setup but also how parents and children can connect you know by playing this games together so family games are also part of our entire program that we can discuss so emotions card are amazing and uh, if you don't want to buy it you can if you have a printer at home or around you you can make some prints and laminate it lot of ideas you can do like that okay singing bowl if possible uh, that is also a wonderful uh, you know tool or a music therapy for children you can do at the end when they are lying down in shavasan singing bowl are also called tibetan bowl you know this chimes that we have so uh, smaller bigger whatever size you don't have to collect all of that like professionally you get the entire set even one bowl is enough you know to play uh, when they are in shavasan or there are several other uses of it which we will discuss over the period of time okay you can always uh, use some read aloud books keep one kota you know sto nice story books with you which has some moral values in it you can either read it without seeing or you can read it loud using the books so this is also some small collection you can keep with you uh, i got this online the next activity yoga spinner so you get this online i could of course you can't make it unless and until you are super creative which you might be <laughs> uh, you have yoga spinner is where you can spin you know uh, there is this box you spin and the black bag that you see it's going to land up on some color either red green blue and based on that you have several cards in that uh, box so if it lands on the blue if the spinner lands on the blue i pick up a blue card and whatever pose comes i am going to do that so that way it's a yoga spinner i will try to show you this props i have i am actually traveling <laughs> so i really wanted to show you some props today actually from the hand that would have given you more clarity but since we all are there in the course together we have still have time since i'm traveling i don't have all of this with me right now but some of the things it will be bringing more sense to you if i show it to them you know uh, to you so hold on in case if you are still confused about certain things uh, but yoga spin is something you can google also you get it online at least it was available some time ago on amazon and of course most important this is something i would highly recommend all of you to make it purchase it print it are yoga cards 
you have to start making it or finding it or ordering it immediately if you are really serious on teaching children okay so yoga cards are must uh, yoga cards are where you have nice attractive pictures of a particular object animal shape from the nature and that asana or preferably a kid doing that asana and if you buy it professionally you will also see that uh, i'm going to magnify it maybe you'll be able to see it better than just a minute are you able to see now yoga cards yeah see i put them like there are lot of cards are there some of them have put tree pose triangle cat tree, uh, table pose so these are hand actually these are handmade so if you are good at drawing and if you have someone around you who is an artist get them done from that's very also a nice way to do it you can write it paint it or simply if you think that's not something i i can do then just download some nice pictures of trees triangle cat table doll whatever asanas are you know so many asanas are connected to nature shapes around us objects in our house so like that you can animals of course so many animals so whatever asanas you know you know or of course our handbook will also have it so gradually you can start making or uh, you can buy if you want to you can also i have both i have few bought from online i have few handmade so i use both so these are yoga cards these are must these are like you know like your show stopper in your kids yoga class i would say that every time any activity you want to take these cards are savior they help you to teach lot of asanas to children in very innovative way lot of games a uh, lot of activities is something that Uh, is so easy to do when we are using cards so this is my number one recommendation to all of you if nothing else gradually then at least first thing first start collecting some uh, yoga cards okay uh, this is of course what i showed you the paper for origami some craft papers that you can keep handy then something i found found online is yoga dice <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just going to go to that screen again okay so yoga dice this is actually for adults uh, but i also use them for kids yoga class and this is also something i've got uh, online yoga dice is where you know universe is deciding what asanas we are going to do today <laughs> so you have group of children you can make them you know divide them into groups and then they can just roll the dice and whatever asanas come so this dice are like a wooden block and every you know uh, side of that dice has some painting on it of that asana or some activity so that way you can uh, uh, use this dice as well this is just an optional things that i am going through and very very important again it's good if you can have children to bring their own small soft toy their favorite small soft toy um or small notepad handbook or any object like pen or something like that if they don't have then you can provide them so uh, and i have seen that usually with younger children they like bringing their own favorite small soft toy when i ask them that if you can bring especially in covid i was taking a lot of online classes so whenever it was time for breathing practices is where we use this toy and i would tell them that bring your small soft toy and they were very happy to bring it you know from their room and show me on the screen that i got this and then they are very happy and encouraged to do that breathing practice Uh, with this toy how when of course hold your horses you're going to see it in our upcoming classes and these are few props by the way <laughs> uh I, as we discuss more activities so some more props are going to enter in our scene <laughs> uh, some more props i would say some things that are in the house but they will become our yoga props uh, is how we are going to see uh, uh every week in some of the activities this is some general idea i thought i should just give you so that you can start collecting uh this stuff from today itself okay so some of the props okay uh this is what i wanted to share today on the first introduction class to just uh kick in your creativity and introduce and actually give you some clarity on how we are we going to uh going to go further with the uh, entire program so uh, now i will take some break
keep my mouth shut and i have all of you if you have some questions some doubts or anything that you are curious to know on how the things are going to be then i'm open up opening up this forum for the questions you can also put in the chat box if you uh, want there are some nice comments i'm going to read it meanwhile you can ask questions children need to show self discipline in class so they can learn and perform yoga in the calm way it is helpful for them to sit in their mats accordingly to the registered order to help them connect connect with mother earth ah so sham there's a balance of this we don't have to really be in strict in the class that's what we want to separate yoga class from the typical education setup where we are forcing children but when i say this i don't mean that we don't have to be disciplined at all there has to be a wonderful balance of both okay so yes children i recommend them to sit on the mat but there are some activities where we are not even using mats sometime or we are moving across the mats in the class so it's a mixture of both but it's good to have uh, them in yoga mat i would rather prefer that kid if i have to connect it to mother earth i would rather prefer that kid to do more of an activity where i will ask a kid to go and collect something from mother nature or pick up some nice stones and make a mandala this is more you know earth connecting activity for me rather than just sitting on the ground at least in the kids yoga class so yes uh, sham we are going to see this in the upcoming i'm i'm hopeful that you are going to join our entire program and this is going to help you a lot your concern that how you know yoga is going to be enjoyable and fun for children oh you have no idea about it trust me if you have not experienced it you are going to change the way you practice yoga when you are going to learn how kids practice is so it is going to be completely on a different dimension <laughs> uh we are planning to make eye pillow mask for special need children what can we put in their eye mask we are washing the outer layer of mask uh we we have put we also done that once we had put some nice uh fragrance flowers lavender uh flower so that something like that can be done the mask okay great okay and for those who have not able to written write down all the points don't worry i'm going to share whatever i'm sharing all the things on the screen i will be posting it on a weekly basis on few days of the week i'll be posting it in the group so you have all of this ppts with you as a you know revisiting thing if you want to okay i'm going to stop sharing the screen and uh, yes if anybody has any question can go ahead and ask and thank you for your nice comments satya ji as usual encouraging to see you again in various courses so welcome to kids yoga as well and i hope your friend also enjoys this journey with us thank you for your encouraging words everyone okay anybody has any question you can raise your hand again ah yeah, ram ji had a question in the beginning yes mm. are uh, uh, i'll just change the setting in case if you're not able to yes now you can unmute yourself yeah can you hear me now yes yes i can yeah so the first question is that uh, just like what we did in september when i was there will be also uh, will there be an external examiner for this uh... <laughs> no i don't no. think so. good good so i am you are going to send us the recordings it's not going to be a live exam i believe as of now it's not okay. anything communicated like that okay. but it's not going to be a live exam you just have to do a recording in your own pace of course there'll be some deadline so okay. you have a lot of days in yeah. that you can like pre record and send it to us right then the second question was that um, do we have to write an essay for the final yes. exam okay yes. good the third question is the third point is that could you <clears throat> once again show me the first uh, slide of the yoga props because uh, i am short of time and i have to go back to germany so i will quickly order all these items uh, besides the chopsticks that i would have at home 
Okay. So what um, I'll do is for everybody's or, convenience, or you, or you could send this today's PPT as soon as possible. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. So props and uh, today's PPT I will send. Yeah, good. And then one more question I have. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Just in case I miss one of the nine classes, how do I handle that? Recordings. Okay, good. Ideally, I would suggest that all of you try to attend live. I am sure you all will agree with me here that the energy that we all share in the live classes, mm -hmm. somehow I, at least for me, this is like that. I have signed up for so many courses sometimes and when it is not live with the teacher online, I have missed it and I have always postponed to hear the recordings and that has never happened in my life. Mm -hmm. My courses are still there in my app. <laughs> But has never really worked. At least maybe I'm lacking in that discipline. But if it works with all of you, good. But trust me, I have loved the courses, especially offline. Number one is what I love the most. If not offline, fine, it's not happening. Then second best is at least to do it live online so that there is some prana exchange happening and that can really, you know, help us a lot on different levels. So I would highly recommend all of you. But for you might have some reasons you won't be able to attend. Try your best to attend live. Once you miss the link of one week, we are going to run so nicely, pastely, you know, paced fast that you might feel that, oh, I'm not connecting now what happened last week. So best to hear the recordings in case if you really miss it immediately. So that's the option. Okay, any more questions? At least there's no problem of the Govinda thing on the online class. <laughs> I, I Not everyone is going to understand this joke, but <laughs> I will I will reveal this gradually over the period of time. <laughs> yes. So thank, um, you. thank you very much. Thank you. I just quickly check the chat box. If there are no questions, then we will end here. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So nice to see you all again. Also, for some everyone. of the participants again. Ciao. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Satya ji has a question. I'm going to unmute her. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, I, I'm not really so family, not familiar, but not the best with a big group of children. You see, that's why I wanted my friends to do it with me. But you were very encouraging in the beginning that like you thought in the beginning that it's difficult for you to become like a child and like this. Oh, so, so tough. Not you, anymore though, but in the beginning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you you say you say that everybody can learn that or it's like a, it's possible, to, isn't it, to be able to deal with bigger group of children? I feel that everybody has some personality naturally and some voice, body language. For some, it comes more natural to suddenly change the voice and become a kid. For some, it will take some practice and reservation and breathing in themselves and practice and then it happens. So it depends, you know, how, how, how much impressions you've been having so far as an adult and how many experiences you've gone through in life, what has it, you know, where it has brought you today with your boys and boys and everything. So it depends. But I would not say that because somebody would be serious person or serious personality for them, it will be difficult. No, you can just, it's a role shifting. You know? It's like switching on, switching off. Of course, with genuine spirit, not just to fake it, but with a genuine spirit, you are shifting the roles and uh, getting into the garbs of children. So everybody can do it, I feel. You just, if you connect to your inner child, which is there in all of us, no matter how serious we are externally uh, or how mature we think, you know, we are, we all have inner child, no matter wherever, wherever we are. So connecting to our inner child, if we are able to do that through this course, things will be more spontaneous and natural when it comes to teaching, you know, that will come out. So I think, I would suggest that all of you who are concerned about this aspect, you know, that whether I be really able to connect with children, connect with your own inner child first. Work with you on your own self through this course and activities. So whatever activities I give you sometimes, do it very seriously. 
you know it's without you know uh, feeling little uh, you know uh, hesitant about it that ah so okay so do it that will help you to connect your inner child and that is going to shift your personality and give it give it another dimension where you'll be able to play the role of you know teaching a child also so it's possible precise answer is it's possible <laughs> Thank you very much, Arati. Most welcome. Thank you, Catherine. So nice to see you after a long time. <laughs> yes, I miss you guys so much. I'm so happy to be here and, um, yes. and I'm very grateful. <laughs> wow. So thank, you. Hey, thank you, Catherine. Wonderful. Okay. Any more questions? All right, then. Fantastic. So, so happy to have you all. Uh, and I'm hoping that few more are going to join us after the recordings next week. So see you all soon. I'll be posting some things on the group. So keep checking on the group for some updates. Okay. Thank you very much. Namaste. Hare Krishna. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you.